Ian Bruce. He uh, owns, he created and owns uh, Uma Luma Gelato. It's a new plant-based gelato shop in Vancouver in Chinatown. And having a chat with, with Ian is always very interesting. First of all, he comes from a software, from a computer background, industry background, which is very different than the food service things. You gotta wonder why you got into food service, I'm very curious. Because first of all, plant-based is huge in Vancouver. If you haven't noticed it yet, plant-based is uh, growing quite quickly. A lot of restaurants have opened up in the past few months. Probably a lot more to come. So it's great to see how just gelato, you know, it's the second thing you, you try it, you don't know it's plant-based until somebody tells you. You're like, wow, this is so good. You know it's plant-based. So let's, uh, let's hear what Ian has to say. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Esteemed guests and fellow speakers. Um, when Richard asked me to speak this evening, I, I scratched my head a lot and wondered why. We just launched our business uh, this summer, and uh, not from the food industry, as, uh, as Richard already indicated, and I'm definitely not a professional speaker, so why? So I figured it out. I think Richard is really, really, really loves ice cream. That's, that's the main reason. So anyway, the theme for tonight was, or still is, uh, Back to Your Roots. So before getting into the Uma Luma story, I thought it would be appropriate to take a little walk back in time, talk to you a little bit about where I came from in terms of my uh, career and rather colorful, eclectic, uh, somewhat idiosyncratic uh, work history. So I started out in, as a fisheries biologist, research assistant, working for McGill University in Montreal. Uh, I was uh, pursuing my degree in marine biology, uh, and uh, so I, I, I got a job with the, uh, through the Dean of Science and uh, went to some beautiful parts of the east, eastern east coast of Canada. I worked uh, two seasons uh, in Newfoundland and Labrador. I spent some time diving under the ice and planting uh, uh, some all kinds of equipment under the water to try and uh, gauge what uh, the fish were doing. We were we were uh, looking at codfish, which is a which was a very important uh, fishery in Canada uh, until it collapsed uh, a few years ago. But anyway, we didn't know that at the time. We were looking for uh, clues and trying to put together the, the puzzle of where they come from, why they come back to the same spots uh, every year. And, and it, was, uh, it was quite exhilarating to do the diving, to work with the local fishermen, uh, collect their fish catch data. And I also spent quite a bit of time uh, in a lab counting fish eggs, which wasn't uh, that exciting. But um, so I did that, and after I graduated, uh, I, I realized that academic life was not really pulling me anymore. I didn't really feel like I wanted to spend the next 10 years uh, doing a PhD and pursuing that. I love the subject. I love the, the you know, biology and the environment, con ecology. It still fascinates me, but I didn't see pursuing a career in that. So I did what most young men, or many young uh, guys want to do when they're young. I went off and traveled. I spent uh, seven or eight months uh, in Southeast Asia. And I came back broke. Uh, to Montreal, that is, and uh, I got a job, I think this was probably prophetic, I got a job scooping ice cream at Ben and Jerry's for a, a very uh, short time, I had a, until I had a friend of mine try to convince me to, uh, to change and go into sales. He thought I would be a natural at it, and uh, so I took his advice, and I, I actually uh, put together a kind of bogus resume, I got a job in the computer industry, this was in the early 90s, things were just starting to take off, and, uh, and away I went. Um, I lasted about six months in the first, this first company. I think they fired me for lack of sales. Uh, I wasn't very good. But I learned some things and I, I persisted and pursued it and eventually got another job and eventually started leading a team of salespeople for a small company, technology company. Uh, we, we grew that business from like $12 million to $100 million. I, I put my head down and I was going to be a professional salesperson. That was my career. I went, I did training classes, Dale Carnegie, I studied books like Thinking Grow Rich from Napoleon Hill. I was really, uh, I was really determined to make my mark in the world, make, make money and, and have the means to do what I wanted to do when I wanted to do it. But um, at some point I got a little tired of that and uh, my girlfriend at the time, she was a lawyer, she, wanted, she was getting sick of uh, corporate law. So both of us decided to uh, leave town. We packed up, we drove our, my car out west and moved to Vancouver. And uh, we, both were we both decided we were gonna work in the film and television industry. So that's what we did. We came here, 
Uh, I did a, you know, I worked, I worked on set, I worked in production, I worked in set. I spent uh, time studying the industry, and then I realized at some point uh, that uh, there was probably only two or three really good jobs in the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And here I was standing around doing nothing most of the time, and wondering why those other idiots are making it and having fun, and I wasn't. So, and I, I basically had a bad attitude. I wasn't really prepared to pay, pay my dues. I think there were, you know, I, I, I just didn't see myself doing what it would take to succeed in the industry. Meanwhile, my girlfriend, who was really had a great attitude, she did great. Uh, she eventually ended up uh, working as a uh, entertainment lawyer, and then uh, at some point she got a job at Cirque du Soleil, and she was, she was actually a negotiator uh, working uh, with the talent and helping them. Yeah, uh, the talent they needed. That's another story. So I left the film and television industry after about a year and went back into technology, technology sales, and uh, I did a stint with AT&T Canada. And then at some point, I, I just realized, like, what am I doing here? This, this little backward, little Canadian market. All my friends and colleagues and competitors down in the south, mm -hmm. down in the US, were making two or three times what I was making, paying less taxes was really happening down there. And because I have dual citizenship, I'm also American, I was able to go down there, so that's what I did. I dragged my uh, newly minted wife with me, and we moved to the Bay Area. Silicon Valley, of course, is a, is a whole other league. It's where so much innovation happens, mm -hmm. and so much technology, there's so much money, and it really did do a lot for, for my career in, in, uh, in the software industry. Um, so we lived there for a few years, and uh, I uh, <clears throat> still um, working for a software company. Uh, I had the uh, privilege of being able to move back to Canada where I wanted to be. I never really resonated very much in California. And so I came back here. I work from my home office. Uh, I have, the, like I said, the privilege of being able to have two day jobs. So I run that. I, I run a global network of partners. And I also run uh, an ice cream company, more or less. So that's the beginning of things. And looking back at this sort of 25 year, very uh, eclectic history, uh, working history, I would say, you know, one thing that really stands out for me is I was really searching for something meaningful to do in my life. I really had big ideas, like most of us do, but doing something that means something, that's going to make an impact on this planet, and yet I never really found it. So, um, why food? Why ice cream? So the one thing I learned growing up in a Jewish home in Montreal is that food is love. It was the one way my mother can get us all together in the same room at the same time. Otherwise, we didn't talk to each other. And food is a great currency, right? Sometimes you can use food to get what you want. If you finish your dinner, son, you can go to the movies with your friends. How was dinner, honey? Would you like some dessert? So food, food is the, is, you know, it's part of an essential, essential human experience, right? It connects us to our planet, it connects us with each other. The subject of food today raises so many questions about our future, our ethics, and really it's our, it brings up our thoughts about our hopes and dreams for the future. And for me, I, I, I really enjoy food. I, I get to travel all over the world. I've been exposed to amazing products from many, many countries. I love to cook, I love to serve food. So for me, food was a really important part of my life, part of my upbringing, and uh, that was on my mind when I decided to start a business. So why did I start a business? Uh, how did I get from this sort of passion project idea to actually putting most of my life savings into something? I mean, what was I thinking? Just when I thought I was done with therapy, uh, I started a business. A business is therapy. Whether it's dealing with my fear of uh, losing it all, fear of failure, to the day-to-day -day grind of running a company, managing staff, dealing with production issues, cash flow, dealing with uh, nasty customers that say mean things about you on social media, to uh, uh, you know unreliable suppliers that don't deliver or out of stock or stock comes that's damaged and destroy after you after you've paid thousands of dollars for it for it so it really is a therapy for me and um, which brings me to 
uh, my own lack of experience and my own uh, you know fears and like I said uh, lack of skill I'm new to this industry so what am I doing here why did I pursue something like this when my life was just getting just winding down I was comfortable I could easily uh, work less and play more so what was I thinking well I think it comes back to the same thing I mentioned before and that is uh, I'll read this quote that I, I lifted from somewhere online it says well basically finding something meaningful in this universe and basically it says finding the balance between the search for the sacred and contentment in the mundane I'll read it again finding the balance between the search for the sacred Sure, many of us can resonate with that, with our own jobs, our own careers, our own businesses. What are we doing here? Where are we all going? And we have these great visions and, and dreams and plans, and yet it's the mundane, it's the day-to-day -day things that we really have to deal with. So we might as well be content with them. Which brings me to the two things that I've taken away in the last 25 years of working that have really kept me going, and they really are uh, persistence and passion and uh, a drive to, to continually evolve and grow and change. So, I'm not done yet. I haven't talked about Uma Luma. So, Uma Luma. I'll just read this to you because it's probably uh, more succinct that way. So, Uma Luma, it's a category changing food business that's focused on bringing the finest organic non dairy ingredients together into a yummy Italian gelato inspired dessert that people will go crazy for. In short, it's a return to my Jewish roots in serving love in a cup. So why ice cream? Well, ice cream is so expansive. It's so uh, flexible. You can do so many things with it. First of all, everyone loves ice cream. But most people don't know you can make things that are savory, things that are sweet, things that are conventional, things that are totally exotic. You can put anything into ice cream. We made a black garlic. We have a strawberry garlic, a strawberry garlic, a strawberry malbec. Uh, that has been really successful for us so far. It's just one of those things that lends itself to being a very creative uh, endeavor, which is a lot of fun. So, Uma Luma uh, basically started in my kitchen, on my kitchen table, with a Revel consumer ice cream maker. Uh, my uh, colleague and uh, uh, co-founder, uh, Mr. Derek Rode, and I got together. I met Derek under uh, various circumstances. He had uh, been running uh, a raw organic chocolate company uh, that ran its course. And uh, we met uh, also in uh, other food circles. We did a David Wolf workshop together. So David Wolf's the author of uh, Superfoods and Longevity Now, really big into healthy eating and all the stuff that impacts our planet and all these good foods that are now becoming more and more popular uh, in various ways. So Derek and I got together, we had those things in common, and uh, we went down two paths simultaneously. I originally had planned to do an organic dairy-based ice cream, and while Derek pursued a non-dairy-based product. And we tried this in, our, in my kitchen. Uh, unfortunately, the gravel machine is not up to the job. When you make ice cream, it has to, it has to freeze really rapidly or you don't get the creamy uh, texture because the ice crystals form too slowly and, and that um, impacts what the result is. So we, we failed, but um, through a series of introductions, we ended up in someone else's kitchen, uh, a distributor uh, that sells uh, coffee machines and other uh, uh, ice cream equipment, among others, and they had a set up there with a real Italian gelato maker. So we ended up borrowing that, and the results were really dramatic. As soon as we put our R&D base into it, we found we got at least something approximating what I had originally envisioned, which was an Italian-inspired gelato that was really creamy and yummy and smooth, and you couldn't tell it was not dairy. So we plugged away at it for a few months, and uh, in came another partner, uh, a gentleman by the name of Andy Kieselbach. He's uh, in the uh, ice cream industry, he works for a company that sells ingredients uh, to, to many successful companies. He's also a chef and it was very instrumental in helping us pull it together, our formulas, our bases, our, a lot of our flavor combinations. So it was a real team effort. And after a few months uh, of plugging away at this, I decided, yes, one thing I learned from the software industry is it's all about the product. You can have good branding, you can have great marketing, all that stuff's really important, but product, product, product. And I really hammered at that. 
these, I had these two food experts working for me, working with me, my partners, and I was telling them, no, it's not good enough, it's not good enough. Keep going, it's not smooth, it's, I don't know, it's too sweet, let's try something else. Went on, went like that for months. And for me, that the product has to stand out, it has to be what I imagine it to be, what I would envision it to be, which is that mecca, that holy grail uh, of ice creams, at least as good as, if not better than traditional gelato. So we did it, and we think we did it, and it's, it's a work in progress. Uh, we ended up, uh, so we ended up investing in uh, uh, equipment, bought an Italian gelato maker, we went into a commercial kitchen, put out all that uh, time and energy into doing that, and we eventually came out with a commercial product. And somewhere along the line, someone convinced me to open a store, which is uh, another crazy idea, but that's another story. Uh, so, I guess in short, I want to say that at the end of the day, it's really, it is really the daily grind. It's the mundane that really gets you. And I guess the message I want to leave us with tonight is that it really is a marathon. It's not a sprint. And you should pace yourself, leave some cash in the bank for a rainy day, or lots of rainy days. Um, take a break. Don't burn out. Remember, connect with that, and that thing that really inspired you, those things that really inspired you from the beginning. And, uh, and, and take heart in, uh, you know, that the day-to-day -day grind is not so, it's not gonna, it's not the end, it's the beginning. Every day is a new beginning. And finally, uh, last but not least, I just wanna say that um, we should be grateful every day. Really grateful for, for what we've done, what we have, whether we're big successes or small successes or, or somewhere in between. And finally, be kind to yourself because you deserve it. Thank you. Great.